at about 1.05 a.m. this morning, coming home from work, about 10 minutes from home, what I'm presuming to be a drunk driver hit the back of my wife's car. I've been driving my wife's car instead of my new truck because her car is older and uh, she has, she's she been working from home since March, so we really haven't put miles on the car. It actually uh, affected the car setting in, in the driveway so long that the, the rear brakes are, are rusted and they're gonna have to be replaced. It, it stops, it works, but uh, there's a there's a vibration and uh, whatnot, and it, it's it's from the rotors being being so you know distorted from setting so long. Regardless, I've been driving the car. It keeps miles off my new truck, and uh, it gets better mileage, and and it needs to be driven. So uh, I, I was in the car and I was at a stoplight, and a guy hit me. Now from the looks of it, uh, he slammed on the brakes and tried to turn right at the last second, but he didn't put his pickup truck up onto the curb in order to avoid me. He was still in the street uh, when we both got out of our vehicles. But uh, he, uh, fortunately it wasn't a direct rear end impact. That would have done a lot more damage to the car and to me. Instead it was the right rear and the, the car's design absorbed most of the impact. Uh, I did feel it, uh, and I do have video of it because I was actually recording a speaking squibbish. I simply just put the phone, jam it in the cup holder, and uh, hit record on the camera and just start talking, and that's an easy way to record a speaking squibbish. So I was actually recording a video at the time of impact. I had come to a stop, and uh, just seconds later, he rear-ended me. Uh, my back is sore, but I don't think I'm injured. Uh, I, I think I'm gonna be fine. I'm just gonna keep an eye on it. It's nothing that, you know, I can't go to work the next day and I need to work. And we've already filed a claim with the insurance company. We're just waiting to get a slot at the body shop to drop off the car and uh, wait for it to all be handled. And everything's gonna be fine, but uh, I mean, the car's drivable. I, I drove home. Had to wait 20 minutes for a cop, even though we're a mile away from the police station, which I think is ridiculous. Uh, I know they don't have a lot of officers out on patrol, and they could have had a busy night. I, I could hear at least three different officers reporting in, I should say two in addition to the officer that was on scene, uh, over his radio. So maybe they were just having a busy night that night. There wasn't a whole lot of traffic. It's one in the morning, right? But... Uh, Based on, based on the way the, uh, the other driver was acting, uh, I think he might have been intoxicated. He did admit to the cop that he had some to drink beforehand. And I pass a bar on the way, uh, this was right around the corner from that bar. There was nobody behind me when I passed the bar. There was nobody behind me when I turned onto the street the accident was on. So he could have very easily pulled out of the bar parking lot and been speeding uh, and just, you know, ran right into me it's hard to say so uh needless to say it's it's a good thing that we've got good insurance we've had good insurance for a long time and uh you know everything's going to be just fine but i thought since i actually recorded the accident i'd go ahead and turn it into a video and just talk about my experience not just with the accident and and the police but uh also with my insurance company so one thing to note when the officer pulled up, he wasn't wearing a face mask, but he did have a uh, neck gaiter, and he did pull it over his face when he approached us. Uh, he asked us very simple questions. Uh, you know, did, were you wearing a seatbelt? He asked both of us that twice, and uh, you could tell right away he was going to hook this guy up because he didn't he didn't um, say anything to me uh, uh, about wait here or anything like that. But he told the other guy to stand in front of his cruiser, and the other guy assumed the position because. He's been there before. Uh, apparently, he had uh, he was arrested on the 31st of some month this year because I could overhear uh, him, uh, you know, getting uh, information back from dispatch when he called it in. So uh, yeah, but he he had him standing in front of the cruiser before then. So he told me that he was going to perform a field sobriety on the guy, and uh, he didn't want me to stick around to see it. So I'll be interested to see the police report. I'll talk about that after the video. I'll be interested to see the police report in a couple days. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was uh, fairly routine. The guy tried to bribe me twice just to, you know, he wanted to give me cash that he had just for us to walk away. I have to have a police report in order to file a, an insurance claim. So, no, I don't think so. Not to mention, I wasn't about to do this guy any favors. 
I mean, there was literally no excuse for him hitting me. And uh, he was chain smoking. And I don't think that was just because he was nervous. I think he was trying to cover up for the breathalyzer because he was trying to smoke as many cigarettes as he could in the 20 minutes. And, uh, yeah, I just, I wasn't having any of it. So here's uh, a clip of the video. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a speaking squib issue. You're going to hear me talking about something. And uh, the, 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 the sound of my voice is pain, but it's more anger from the pain than, than you know, ow, I'm hurt. It's ow, I'm mad. So here you go. Is it because we're all trying to own up each other? We all want to live in a nice neighborhood. We all want our children to live in a nice neighborhood. The older people in the neighborhood want their grandchildren to have a nice place to come over to when they come over. So there's nothing wrong with keeping your lawn mowed and painting your house and doing things like that. These are normal things. That's not necessarily keeping up with the Joneses. Now being in a homeowners association, you might... Ow! What the f You owned your car for four years. You named it Brad. You loved Brad. And then you totaled him. So here's a screenshot from the accident report. It took me, I think, four weeks to get the accident report when it's really supposed to be available in two to three days. Unit two, that's me, was stopped at the red light. The driver in unit one, that's the asshole who hit me. Rear-ended unit two. There was damage to both vehicles. I really didn't see damage to his bumper because the truck was rusted and two-toned and all that. So I'm not really too sure what all damage he, he suffered. Following an investigation, a driver from Unit 1 was arrested for operating while under the influence. Second whatever that means. The driver of unit one was 0.12 blood alcohol content. The driver of unit one advised that he was trying to get his phone. So he's making an excuse saying that he was, he was reaching for his phone and he didn't, and he, you know, whatever. There was no airbag deployment. So uh, my insurance asked if I wanted uh, an ambulance. I said, no, the cop asked me if I wanted an ambulance. I said, no, but I said I wanted it Noted in the report that I had some back pain, and it says here, driver of unit two complained of back pain but declined medical treatment. I wanted it there just in case I have to make a claim later on because it, it persists and doesn't go away. Here in Michigan, you can, uh, you can go back for anything that happens in an auto accident medically related for the rest of your life. So that's why our insurance rates are so high. Here you can see I snapped a quick pick while the cop was inside running this guy's records and whatnot. He just stood there. The cop didn't tell him to turn around or put his hands to his side or anything. The guy just stood there. He knew. He knew he was getting hooked up. He's been there before. So I got something from the county prosecutor like two or three days later that said I was a victim of a crime. And uh, even though I couldn't, I still couldn't get an accident report online. I couldn't buy one online. At that time, I already got something. And, of course, it didn't detail the crime. It didn't even say. It just said, you know, I could show up to a court hearing or something like that. But it did, It left no details. It wanted me to contact the prosecutor's office if I wanted to go. So that's just the way they handled it. In the end, uh, everything sort of worked out. Here's some pictures the next morning or that day, same day, same same morning, just after the sun was up of some of the damage to the car.